I'm sure you're all wondering what it's like to be a mermaid. Well, let me tell you, it's not all singing and swimming around in circles. Being a mermaid is hard work. They have to watch out for predators in the sea, find food and avoid getting tangled up in fishing nets. But of course, the perks are many. They get to explore the depths of the ocean which are full of mystery and beauty. They're also blessed with gorgeous tails and ethereal beauty. What would you do if you were a mermaid and must choose between the sea and land? Today I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do and how to beat the evil octopus which in the movie The Little Mermaid. Spoilers ahead. The movie opens on a misty morning out at sea. Then a ship appears out of the mist, its crew singing tales of the fabled mer people. A young prince called Eric, his dog Max, and his advisor Crimsby are on board that ship. Crimsby dismisses the mere people as nautical nonsense, but one sailor is adamant that they are genuine. The fish that the sailor was carrying slipped from him and fell into the water as he was preoccupied by Grimsby. Before leaving the ship, the fish lets out a sigh of relief. As the fish travels across the vast ocean, the opening credits begin to play. Eventually, you would discover more people. They then travel through the ocean to a glittering underwater fortress in the aquatic nation of Atlantica. King Triton was hosting a performance in his honor in the castle, which belonged to him, featuring his seven daughters and Sebastian, the composer for the Crab Court. The concert goes according to schedule until Triton, to his dismay, learns that his youngest daughter, Ariel, is not present. Ariel was actually out with her best pal, Flounder the Fish, digging up a shipyard. She discovers a pipe and a fork inside one wreck, which excites her interests. She's oblivious that a shark is standing outside, keeping an eye on her and Flounder. The ocean is a mysterious and majestic place, but it can also be dangerous. Sharks have been known to either prey before attacking, and as such, it's important to know how to avoid them. The first and most important thing to remember is to never swim alone. Sharks are more likely to attack lone swimmers than groups, so it's always best to go in the water with a friend or two. Second, it is important to be aware of the environment around you. Be sure to look for any signs of sharks in the area, such as large fin or tail movements. If you see any of these, immediately leave the area and move to a safe distance. Third, wear bright and reflective clothing when you are swimming in the ocean. Sharks are attracted to dark colors, and wearing brighter and more reflective clothing will make you less visible to them. Finally, it is important to avoid swimming in areas where there is a lot of bait fish. Sharks tend to follow their prey, and if there is a large school of bait fish in the area, there is a chance that a shark may be following them. By following these tips, you can greatly reduce your chances of being eyed by a shark. The ocean is an incredible place, and with a bit of caution and preparation, you can safely enjoy all that it has to offer. When Ariel and Flounder manage to capture the shark in an anchoring, the shark charges into the room they're in and chases after them around the cemetery. When they reach the surface, they find Scuttle, a bird who is their buddy. Ariel requests information from Scuttle about the objects she has gathered. He refers to the pipe as a snarfblatt, an instrument used for generating music, and the fork as a dingle hopper, a tool used by people to style their hair. Ariel is immediately brought back to her missed concert when she hears the word music and rushes back home. Ariel, however, is unaware that Flotsam and Jetsam, two shady eels, are keeping an eye on her. The two are spies working for Ursula, the sea witch, a former courtier of King Triton who was exiled. Triton's crimes against Ursula have enraged her to the point that she continually plots retaliation. Ursula ordered her associates to monitor Ariel the instant she caught her eye, expecting to use her to approach the king. Ariel is being reprimanded by Triton and Sebastian for skipping the concert as the action then shifts to the royal castle. Triton becomes enraged when Flounder goes in to defend her and unintentionally reveals the interaction with Scuttle. Avoiding being caught doing something illegal can be a tricky and sometimes impossible endeavor. The best way to avoid being caught is to take precautions before taking any action. First, make sure to research the laws of the area you're in, as well as the potential punishments for breaking the law. Knowing the law and the potential consequences will help you make better decisions when it comes to avoiding detection. Second, try to stay below the radar. If you're planning to do something illegal, try to do it in a way that will minimize your visibility. This may mean avoiding public spaces and staying away from cameras and other surveillance. Third, always have a backup plan. If you're caught, having an escape route or a plan to get away quickly can help you minimize the consequences. It's also a good idea to have a lawyer on call in case you do get caught. Finally, remember that the best way to avoid getting caught is to not do anything illegal in the first place. Before taking any action, think through the potential consequences and the likelihood of getting caught. If the risk is too high, it's better to just walk away. 
Going to the surface where all is forbidden by law and his realm out of concern that Burfolk would be captured by humans. Triton is enraged by Ariel's belief that people aren't really all that evil, and he tells her that as long as she lives under his ocean, she will do anything he commands and whatever she does not desire. Ariel then walks away in tears, followed by Flounder. Triton asks Sebastian whether he was too harsh with Ariel after they have departed, and Sebastian responds, definitely not. Triton has the notion to assign Sebastian to watch over Ariel when Sebastian indicates that she requires continual monitoring. Although Sebastian agrees with the king's requests, he's not happy about following around some headstrong youngster. Sebastian's thoughts are diverted when he notices Ariel and Flounder swimming off to another location which causes him to pursue her. He's guided to a secret grotto where he finds a collection of various human artifacts. Ariel sings about her collection of human artifacts and how she wants to travel to the human world despite what her father said about them since she's still stung by his comments and doesn't trust him. Sebastian storms in and abruptly breaks the tension by threatening to tell the king about Ariel's hideaway. Before they could reach a compromise, a huge object is observed hovering overhead, obstructing moonlight from the grotto ceiling. Ariel makes an attempt to reason with him but fails. Ever curious, Ariel goes to the surface to investigate what this enormous thing was. The thing shoots fireworks into the night sky, revealing itself to be a human spacecraft. Despite Sebastian's objections, Ariel swims towards the ship and boards it to see dancing seamen. Ariel discovers that the people on board are commemorating their prince's birthday. One animal that captures her eye is Max, a sheepdog that develops feelings for Ariel. Falling in love at first sight can be very overwhelming, and it might seem like it's out of your control. But there are a few tips and tricks to help you avoid the potential pitfalls of love at first sight. First, take a step back and get to know the person. Instead of letting your emotions take over, take the time to talk, listen, and learn about the person before you jump to conclusions. Second, don't make assumptions. Don't assume that you know someone just because of their looks or a few words they said. Everyone has a unique story to tell, so take the time to get to know the person better before you make any judgments. Third, try to stay busy and distracted. This will help to keep your mind off the person and give you time to process and come to terms with your feelings. Finally, don't forget to take care of yourself. Self-care is important and it can help to remind you that you're in control of your emotions. So if you want to avoid falling in love at first sight, take the time to get to know the person. Don't make assumptions. Stay busy and distracted and take care of yourself. Doing these things will help you stay in control of your emotions and enjoy the experience of getting to know someone. Ariel, however, is left mesmerized when she witnessed Prince Eric, the owner of the dog accepting a big garish statue of himself as a birthday gift from Grimsby, who sourly declares that he had thought it would be a wedding present. While denying that he has yet to find the ideal female, Eric is adamant that when he does, it'll strike him like lightning. At that moment, distant thunderclaps reverberated, followed by a brisk wind that became stronger. When your ship is in a dangerous storm and your ship sinks, it's important to remain calm and focus on survival. First, if possible, you should put on a life jacket and try to swim to a safe area away from the ship. If you're in the open sea, you should try to look for any nearby debris that you can cling to for support. It's also important to keep an eye out for any other people that may also be in the water and provide assistance if needed. If there's no debris around, you should begin to tread water and conserve energy by staying afloat. Also, be aware of the direction that the current is taking and try to swim in the opposite direction. If you're able to make it to land, be sure to find shelter and document your experience. Finally, in this type of situation, it's always best to remain positive and believe that you'll make it through. You may even find yourself being creative and coming up with witty jokes to keep your spirits up. After all, laughter is the best medicine and it can help you stay focused on the task at hand. Remember, the key is to stay calm, stay alert, and stay alive. A storm suddenly rushes in, violently engulfing the ship and crew in a hail of wind and water. The crew hurries to close the hatches, but it's ineffective. Ariel is knocked off the ship, but is able to see it catch fire as a result of a lightning strike. The crew and the statue of Eric are thrown overboard when the ship slams into a pile of rocks. Eric learns that Max is still aboard the burning ship and sets forth to save him, even if everyone else abandons ship and makes it to the lifeboats. Life Unfortunately, while Eric succeeds in rescuing Max, he's blasted away by a massive explosion brought on by the onboard gunpowder and crashes into the sea below. Ariel saves Eric and brings him back to shore when she sees this and runs to his help. Once at the coast, Ariel sinks about wanting to enter Eric's realm before scurrying away when she heard Max and Grimsby coming. Eric just manages to catch a glimpse of Ariel during her song before she disappears, 
but as Grimsby lifts him up, he clearly recalls a girl who had saved him and is determined to track her down. Sebastian warns Ariel that the issue needs to be kept a secret from her father while she observes them from a nearby rock, but Ariel pays little regard. Ariel, on the other hand, adamantly declares that she will be a part of Eric's universe with passion and resolve. Ariel is being observed by Ursula's eels, although she's unaware of this. Ursula, who's delighted by the circumstance, strangely peers at a group of polyps in her lair who are all previous dreamers who have now risen to power. Ariel is now a wonderful addition to the group, she murmurs. Ariel starts thinking about Eric a few days later, which intrigues her father who thinks Ariel is in love with another merman. When it comes to falling in love and not getting caught by your father, the best advice is to be smart, strategic, and patient. You don't want to rush into anything and risk getting caught. Start by getting to know the person you're interested in. See if you have a connection and get to know them on a deeper level. When you feel like you can trust them, it may be time to introduce them to your father. Make sure you choose the right time and place to do this. You should also take precautions to keep your relationship a secret from your father. Don't post about it on social media and try to keep your time together private. You may also want to consider using a fake name when you're out in public or when you're texting. Finally, remember to keep your father updated on your activities. Let him know where you're going and who you're seeing, just not why. That way, if you ever slip up, he won't be too suspicious. Falling in love doesn't have to be risky or difficult. With the right approach and some strategic planning, you can keep your relationship under wraps and enjoy the joys of love without getting caught. Sebastian is frantically attempting to keep the secret a secret the entire time. Then Ariel decides she wants to go see Eric, but Sebastian isn't having it. He sings a song about how the water is superior to the land in an effort to bring her back to reality. While the fish are having a party and Sebastian tries to convince them all to sing together, Flounder sneaks up and steals Ariel away and seen. By the time the song is over, Ariel has vanished, leaving Sebastian all by himself to complain about her. The Royal Herald abruptly summons Sebastian to inform the king about Ariel. The most important thing to remember when trying not to accidentally spill the beans is to think before you speak. Before you blurt something out, ask yourself if it's something you should keep to yourself. If it's something that could harm someone else or make them feel embarrassed, it's best to keep it to yourself. Another way to avoid spilling the beans is to be mindful of your audience. Don't talk about something that you wouldn't want the other person to know. Even if you're in a private setting, it's best to be careful about what you say. Additionally, it's a good idea to practice mindfulness when it comes to conversations. This means being conscious of your body language and facial expressions as well as the way you phrase your sentences. It's easy to accidentally let something slip if you're not paying attention to your words. Finally, trust your gut. If something feels like it shouldn't be said, they don't say it. It can be hard to keep your lips sealed, but it's important to remember that the best policy is usually to stay quiet. A little self-control can go a long way in preventing you from spilling the beans. Sebastian accidentally spills the beans at the meeting out of fear that Triton has figured out what has transpired and is then compelled to give the king the whole story, much to his chagrin. To Ariel's surprise, Flounder explains that he had managed to save the statue of Eric from the wreck back at her grotto. The friendly greetings are, however, interrupted as Triton enters the cave, trailed by Sebastian. After a brief disagreement, Ariel meets Triton and declares her love for Eric and the fact that she saved him from drowning. Triton, horrified by her remarks, approaches Ariel and uses his trident to shatter all the hidden jewels in her cave, turning them into a mound of trash. Ariel loses it and starts sobbing as Triton even destroys the statue of Eric. Ariel in tears orders Sebastian and Flounder to leave her alone to grieve when a now remorseful Triton departs, feeling incredibly regretful, humiliated and guilty about what he had done. She doesn't want them to console her. Unbeknownst to her, Flotsam and Jetsam enter the cave and convince Ariel to see Ursula in order to fulfill her desire to be with Eric. Ariel accepts the escort from Flotsam and Jetsam who deliver her to Ursula since she doesn't trust Triton. Ariel rejects Sebastian's attempt to warn her about Ursula as they go because she's still upset with him for telling her father. Ariel is pursued by Flounder and Sebastian all the way to Ursula's hideout. Ariel is consoled by Ursula, who explains that while she can't fulfill her requests to become human for three days, she must give Eric the genuine love kiss before sunset on the third day, or else Ursula will claim her as her own. In their quest to stop Ariel, Flounder and Sebastian are interrupted by Flotsam and Jetsam. However, she's forced to give up her voice in exchange for legs. Ariel accepts these conditions and signs the agreement, giving Ursula's voice a home in a necklace and granting herself human legs. Ariel can no longer breathe underwater after being converted into a human, 
So Sebastian and Flounder help Ariel to the surface by escaping from the grip of Flotsam and Jetsam. The gang eventually makes it to land, where they find Scuttle on a beach close to Eric's castle. Ariel persuades Sebastian to assist the gang since she loves Eric and would be sad if she returned home, despite Sebastian's threats to inform King Triton of the agreement that she made with Ursula. Scuttle goes on to explain to Ariel that dressing like a human is the first step in becoming indivisible to them. As Prince Eric approaches them, Scuttle removes a piece of a sail and some rope for Ariel to wear. Eric is eager to send the girl to his castle to be taken care of even though he's unaware that she's the girl who saved his life with Sebastian trailing along. Sebastian is then directed to the castle kitchen within the palace while Ariel is taking a bath due to a sequence of bad incidents. There, Sebastian runs upon a chef who's infatuated with seafood and tries to prepare him. Ariel had supper with Eric and Grimsby while this argument is going on in the kitchen. While they are talking about giving Ariel a tour of the realm, she accepts. Ariel watches Eric play with his dog Max later that evening before going to bed. Sebastian talks about ways to convince Eric to kiss Ariel, but she's too entranced by the wonders of the human realm to pay attention. Sebastian finally informs Ariel that she's totally hopeless before nodding out. The situation is bad back at King Triton's palace. Sebastian and Ariel have not been seen anywhere, despite King Triton sending out many search parties to seek for them. Triton orders his choir to never stop searching until they're located. Triton feels terrible regret for what he did and assumes responsibility for Ariel's abduction. Eric and Ariel nearly kiss each other. The following morning, Ariel and Eric set off on their kingdom tour, starting in the neighborhood town. Ariel is mesmerized by everything she sees, including dancing, horses, and puppets. After a long day, Eric takes Ariel for a lagoon tour in the evening. Seeing this as the ideal opportunity, Sebastian decides to take matters into his own hands and plays a song to encourage the two to kiss. The music is abruptly cut short by Flotsam and Jetsam, who also managed to capsize the boat, destroying the atmosphere. Ursula, who is dissatisfied with the advancement Ariel is making, decides to take matters into her own hands and assumes the appearance of Vanessa, a stunning young woman. She then hypnotizes Eric using Ariel's voice before Eric could tell Ariel the truth about his feelings. The wedding ship leaves a port the next morning with Eric and Vanessa, slated to be wed by sunset, breaking poor Ariel's heart. If you're feeling the urge to confess your love and you're afraid it'll be too late, don't panic. There are plenty of ways to express your feelings before it's too late. If you're feeling brave, why not blurt it out? Just make sure you do it in a way that's not too intimidating. Want to keep it low-key? Write a letter. It could be a nice, long love letter or just a simple note with a few heartfelt words. If you're not into words, you could always make them a gift. It could be something symbolic or something that reminds you of them. If you're too shy to tell them face to face, you could always send them a message online. It could be a simple text, a funny meme, or even a cute video. In the end, the most important thing is to make sure you actually do it. Don't wait until it's too late. Get creative and be bold. You never know what can happen. While Vanessa successfully portrays herself as a besotted lady who cannot stop clinging to Eric's side, leaving no room for skepticism, Ariel and her companions are left behind. Ariel starts to cry as she watches the ship depart because of Eric's death. Nobody's aware that Scuttle, who hears Ariel's voice coming from the bride's dressing room, just so happens to be flying above the wedding ship at the time. He observes by a porthole, and when Vanessa looks in the dressing room mirror, Ursula's image is visible. Scuttle flies off to tell Ariel and the others about Ursula and her scheme after realizing that Vanessa is actually Ursula hiding under Vanessa's disguise. As the sun sets, the gang must act quickly, so they devise a plan. Ariel and Flounder pursue the wedding ship on a barrel. Sebastian informs King Triton of the situation, and Scuttle departs to prevent the nuptials. The wedding is just getting started when Scuttle attracts a wide variety of lagoon and sea creatures to congregate aboard the wedding ship. When the onslaught starts, Vanessa receives a brief warning, and the ship is thrown into chaos, allowing Ariel the time she needs to board. In addition, Vanessa feels completely overwhelmed, lost, and unable to accomplish anything. Scuttle is able to break the necklace off Vanessa's neck with Max's assistance, scattering it around the deck, restoring Ariel's voice, and freeing Eric from the curse. Vanessa urges Eric to leave Ariel alone before discovering that her voice is now Ursula's voice after her shell cracked. Eric later meets Ariel and acknowledges that she's the one who saved him. However, the sun falls and Ariel transforms back into a mermaid before the two can have a kiss. Ariel is grabbed by Vanessa as she reverts to Ursula and leaps back into the water. A quarrel breaks out as soon as Ursula gets Ariel to herself and is considering her next move before running into Triton and Sebastian. 
Ursula ignores Trent's demands for her to free Ariel so he confronts her. In response, Ursula asserts that Ariel is her property. Triton tries to revoke the agreement Ariel made that ties her to Ursula after hearing her apologize to him, but he's enabled since being legal has given him magical powers. Triton thus spares Ariel by ratifying the pact and taking Ariel's place as a polyp who is held captive by Ursula. Eric meantime departs from the wedding ship in a rowboat and heads to Ariel's location to rescue his in danger love. Ariel grows enraged to the verge of finding Ursula when she takes Triton's crown and trident and established herself as queen of the sea. Ursula is abused by Ariel when she confronts her. Protecting your man from evil woman is no easy task, but it's possible. The best way to protect your man is to ensure that he's always aware of the situation. Make sure he's aware of who he's interacting with and who might be trying to manipulate him. Encourage him to be honest and open with you about any interactions he has with other women. If you suspect someone is trying to take advantage of him, don't be afraid to have a conversation about it. Remind him that as long as he's honest and true to you, you'll always be there for him and will always have his back. If he ever finds himself in a situation where someone is trying to take advantage of him, let him know that you're there to support him and help him get out of it. It's also important to remind him that evil women exist, but they are not the norm. Most women are kind, honest, and loyal. He should remember to be discerning when interacting with new people and to always be aware of the situation. Finally, when it comes to protecting your man from evil women, the most important thing is to make sure that he feels safe. Let him know that you love and care for him and that you'll always be there for him no matter what. This will give him the confidence to stand up for himself and to make wise decisions when faced with difficult situations. Eric jumps to the sea below and uses a harpoon to stab Ursula in the arm as she tries to run Ariel by using the trident. While Ursula directs Flotsam and Jetsam to drown Eric, Ariel cautions him to keep an eye out for danger. Eric tries to get aboard a boat and swim to shore but is dragged under the Flotsam and Jetsam. Flounder and Sebastian observe the disturbance and fight Flotsam and Jetsam in an effort to help Eric and save him. Ursula tries to use the trident to kill Eric. But an enraged Ariel steps in and pulls Ursula's hair, forcing her to miss Eric and vaporize Flotsam and Jetsam instead, turning them to ashes. Ursula first laments their passing before turning against the perpetrators in a rage. Ursula, who is furious, spouts black ink and starts to grow herself while Ariel rushes to join Eric. Just before Ursula's enormous form, which is about the size of a kraken, appears, leaving Eric and Ariel defenseless against her strength, Ariel tries to convince Eric to escape himself, but he won't leave her. Shipwrecks are raced from the ocean floor by a maelstrom Ursula generates when on the rampage. Eric uses a broken bowsprit to pull himself inside the ship. Ariel avoids the trident's blasts as she starts to flee from Ursula who's trying to ruin her. Eric saves Ariel and kills Ursula by shoving a broken bowsprit into the wicked witch's abdomen just as Ursula is about to destroy Ariel with the trident's blasts. By exploding into a dispersed mess of organs, Ursula passes away. Eric manages to reach the coast and passes out on the sand, while Ariel is in harm. King Triton and the merfolk in her garden are freed from Ursula's curse after she's killed and her body sinks to the ocean floor. With Triton having reclaimed his throne, Triton and whole kingdom, peace is once more restored to the ocean. Triton, who is now on the surface, notices Ariel staring at Eric and concludes that she genuinely loves him. Triton tells Sebastian that he would miss Ariel and that he must release her to live her own life after speaking with Sebastian then irrevocably changing her back into a human, he does it again. Triton sends Ariel to Eric so they may reunite, finally sharing a kiss. Eric proposes to Ariel, she accepts, and the two are wed shortly after. Ariel bids her friends and family, including her six older sisters, her father Triton, Sebastian, Flounder, and Scuttle, farewell at the ceremony before beginning her new life in Eric's surface world of humans. Ariel and Eric get married on board the wedding ship. But not after Chef Louis pursues Sebastian once more in an effort to cook him, but Sebastian effortlessly outwits him. The movie closes with Ariel and Eric sharing a kiss as the screen goes dark and the wedding ship sails away behind a rainbow that Triton makes with his trident. And that's all for today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to many such videos. Thanks for watching and take care.